Hi, my name is Mandy. This is Evie. It's been a while since you've seen both of us. Evie because I've been filming while she's in nap and me because I didn't download the editing software onto my new computer for a little while and well here we are. Today we're going to be filming my Newt's wrap up. You can see I've got my Gryffindor t-shirt on. Even though I am a Ravenclaw, it's okay, my mother-in-law did not know she gave it to me. But I'm so excited to tell you about what I read for the new 3 to thon If you saw my Newt's TBR, you'll know that the wizard career that I was shooting for was Librarian. I did succeed in becoming a librarian. I read all seven books on my TBR. Well, I didn't actually read all seven books on my TBR, but I fulfilled all seven books. I know that any of you that have ever participated in a readathon know that frequently TBRs get thrown out the window as other books come into play. To become a librarian, I needed to get an O in Ancient Runes. That means I needed to perform the three levels. To receive an acceptable in Ancient Runes, I needed to read a book recommended by a friend. Nice going, Evie. The book that I decided to read was The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet. This is based on the web series The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which came out a few years ago. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling told through the format of a web blog. Vlog. Yes. Evie, yeah, this. This goes a little bit more in depth into the story. I mean, with the vlogs, they make it seem as though it is real, that this is all happening, and when you're doing a vlog, you don't tell the whole story, and so I got to see a lot more to the characters in this. I had a really fun time reading it. I give it a four-star review. I was actually able to read and watch the web series simultaneously. I would read a little bit and then I would watch the web series up until that point and I kind of leapfrogged it and it was really fun and entertaining. The only things that I would say is that the beginning was a little bit slow for me. It took me a little while to get into it but once I did get into it I flew through it I was so excited to get to a point where I could watch the next videos. Also, there was a slight disconnect between the Lizzie you see on camera and the Lizzie you see in the diaries, which when it comes down to it, that's not a very big deal. To receive exceeds expectations in Ancient Runes, you need to read a book written in the past tense. The book that I chose for this was The Nightingale by Chris and Hannah. Yes, this was my first Chris and Hannah book and I did enjoy it a lot. I gave this a four star rating. It is about two sisters living in France during World War II and their differences in what they do and how they respond to the hardships that they face. You have two sisters, as I said. One of them is a wife and mother whose husband goes off to war. The other sister is a strong independent woman who does what she can to fight and resist the Nazis. I have to say that this book was not always easy to read. This was a very hard time during human history, but I think that even though it's hard to read, that's what makes it so important. If we shy away from these hard things in our past, then we're doomed to repeat them. That being said, there were several things that I really enjoyed about this book. A few of them are scenes and parts that I can't tell you without making them spoilery. I will say that I think that this book did a really good job balancing hard and difficult, violent things with being truthful and letting you know that they happened, that they were there, but without getting too violent or gory. The same for the sex scenes. They were there, but they weren't in description, which I really liked. Overall, this is a great book. I can definitely see why so many people love it on booktube. If you have any other Kristen Hanna books that you'd like to recommend to me, she has a ton out there, and I am willing to try some now that I know that I like her writing. For my Outstanding in Ancient Runes, I had to read a book that's been on my TBR for ages. The book that I chose for that was The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Vodder. I obviously am pretty late to this party. Oh, by the way, if you hear the crying in the background, we got a dog! Yay! 
She doesn't like that I'm keeping her out of the room. She wants to be with the people. Her name is Sammy and she is the sweetest dog ever. She is so patient with Evie and that's all we can ask for in a dog at this point. This is about a girl named Blue whose family is full of psychics and while Blue is not psychic, she can enhance the psychic abilities of others. She lives in a town where there is a fancy prep school for boys, the Aglimby boys. Their motto is the Raven and so everyone calls them the Raven boys. Now Blue has been told by every psychic she's ever met, all of her family members, that if she kisses her true love, he will die. So no kissing for Blue. Well, at the beginning of this book, they are at this thing that her mom does where she goes to this graveyard and basically the souls of everyone who's going to die that year show up. Well, lo and behold, Blue, who never sees anything, sees someone and she's told that the only way that she could see him is one if he's her true love or two if she kills him so his name is Gansey. she eventually runs into him well he is not your average raven boy he is looking for a welsh king from olden days who he thinks is buried in virginia somewhere it's his life goal to find him and blue eventually joins that quest and becomes friends with him and his other Raven boys. That's all I'll say. As I tried to summarize the plot of this book, it was really complicated, but it's so worth it. I am so sad that it took me so long to read this book. I gave this one a five stars. Not only were the characters endearing, the writing style was amazing. I love Maggie Stiefvater's writing now. I know a lot of people have said that The Wolves of Mercy Fall isn't as good. And I read that one probably about 10 years ago. It's been a long, long time. So I think I might want to revisit it, but I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will say the first one was actually my favorite. Usually the first one is not always my favorite, but it was. Writing style is amazing. It's great. I also needed to receive an E, Exceeds Expectations, in Defense Against the Dark Arts. For an acceptable, the, you needed to read a book with a black cover under the dust jacket. So I decided to read Cress by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles series. I won't tell you much about it, except that each book incorporates a new fairy tale character to add to the retelling. First book, Cinder. Cinderella, Scarlet, was Little Red Riding Hood. And Press here was Rapunzel. I enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. I did feel like it was a little bit of a placeholder waiting for the main events of the last book. So that's why I didn't love it, love it, but I still really enjoyed it. Marissa Meyer is one of my favorite new authors. For an exceeds expectation in Defense Against the Dark Arts, you have to read the first book from your TBR that comes to mind. The first book that came to mind for me was The Distance Between Us by Casey West. This was one of the last books that I have by Casey West that I haven't read yet. All of them were read this year. I'm a nut, I know. And from what I've heard, this one is a little bit low on people's favorites. Basically, you have a girl named Cayman who works at her mom's doll shop and one day a guy named Xander comes in who obviously comes from money and came in doesn't and they start up a friendship that turns into a romance but can they overcome the distance between them? I really enjoyed this. I thought that the characters were fun. It was a nice fast read and like all good Casey West books there was a nice balance between serious and lighthearted. And while everybody else puts this lower on their list, I put this towards the higher end of the middle. It wasn't my absolute favorite Casey West book, but it wasn't my least favorite. And actually, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. My last exams were History of Magic. I needed to receive and exceed expectations. For an acceptable History of Magic, you needed to read a fantasy, and I chose to read Furthermore by Tahara Mafi. This is actually my first Tahara Mafi book. I haven't read anything else by her, but I know that she has some books that are very well-loved on booktube. 
This book is a middle grade about a girl named Alice who lives in a place called Farrenwood. In Farrenwood, color is magic. The more color you have, the more magic you possess. Well, Alice is completely colorless. She, well not completely, she has no color, no pigment except for her eyes. At one point before this book started, her father had disappeared and so one of her least favorite people from her class is a boy named Oliver and he actually comes and asks her help to go and save her father. They have to go to Furthermore, which is almost like a Wonderland type place full of bizarre rules, bizarre magic, and they have to go deeper and deeper into this world to get to a point where they can find her father. I enjoyed this book. I thought that the writing style was fun. I rated it four stars. It almost reminded me a little bit of the Chronicles of Narnia where you have an omniscient narrator who speaks to you as the reader. And I know that that kind of thing can get old very fast, but I feel like she balanced that really well. The only thing I'd say is I feel like the ending came a little bit too abruptly and was a little too convenient. But overall, really nice writing style, beautiful words, it was great. If you watch my Newt's TBR, you may recognize most of the books that I've talked, actually all of the books that I talked about today. Those ones were all in my original TBR, but my last book was not. To receive and exceeds expectation in History of Magic, you need to read a book with a map in it. I was originally going to read Winnie the Pooh, but it didn't just really didn't happen. And I picked up this book and there was a map in it and I said, let's do it. The book that I chose to read was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Brigitte Kemner. I have seen people love this book. I've seen people hate this book. I picked it up at the library and decided I would give it a shot. And I, I liked it a lot. I gave it a four star rating. She's destroying my bookshelf but I'm gonna get new books for my birthday anyways, and I'm just gonna decide not to care. Okay, this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but in this version you have the Prince Wren is cursed to relive the fall of his 18th year over and over again until he finds a girl to love. If at the end of that season he does not find a girl to love, he is turned into a beast for a night. He's uncontrollable, he wrecks havoc, he kills people, it's awful and then everything resets and he starts over again. After a couple of bad tries of Boom in his kingdom, he did not want to subject them to this anymore, so of course he decides to take women from our world, and that's where Harper comes in. Through some series of unfortunate events, she ends up being the one that is taken to the castle. She is not the normal type to come in. She's independent, she survived the streets of DC, and she, doesn't like Ren and she doesn't like the way that he treats the people around him or his people and they actually start to become friends as he starts listening to her to look outside of the castle into his kingdom and that was one thing I really liked about this that it's not just life going on in this castle doing whatever they focused on what was going on outside and they tried to change it this is a first in a series and I feel like even though there were loose ends, I can wait until the rest of the books in the series come out before I finish it. And that's what I really like for in a series. So there you have it. That's what I read for Newts. Now I'm just sitting here waiting for Hogwarts to call me back. Come on Hogwarts, I'm ready to replace Madame Pince as the librarian. Somebody's got to stop the kids from eating chocolate while reading. I'll totally confiscate that chocolate and probably eat it while reading. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click subscribe. You can also follow me on my social media, which I will link below. I hope you're having a great bookish day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!